McLean once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, bringing down rain and even lightning. Well, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam war. Governments have been playing with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. We're actually using trillion watt lasers now. They precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity down the, down the beam. The bad news is, if it's a clear blue sky, it's not going to do anything at all because it only takes water vapor that's already in the air and condenses it. However, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. This next story is so unbelievable, we didn't think it could possibly be true. But after receiving thousands of records and declassified reports from the Army, it's confirmed that during the Cold War, the United States military conducted secret tests on unsuspecting people in the city of St. Louis. Lisa Martino Taylor's life work has been to uncover details of the Army's ultra secret military experiments carried out in St. Louis and other cities during the 1950s and 60s. This study was secretive for a reason. Um, they didn't have um, volunteers stepping up and saying, Yeah, I'll breathe zinc cadmium sulfide with radioactive particles. These Army archive pictures show how the tests were done in Corpus Christi, Texas in the 1960s. In Texas, planes were used to drop the chemical, but in St. Louis, the Army placed chemical sprayers on buildings and station wagons. City officials were kept in the dark about the tests. The Cold War cover story was that the Army was testing smoke screens to protect cities from a Russian attack. Clearly, they went to great lengths to deceive people. By making hundreds of Freedom of Information Act requests, she uncovered once classified documents that confirmed the spraying of zinc cadmium sulfide. The greatest concentration of this compound was sprayed near the pruitt Igo housing complex just south of downtown St. Louis. It was home to 10,000 low-income people and an estimated 70% were under the age of 12. Martino Taylor claims they all unknowingly inhaled this compound morning, noon, and night so the government could measure its effects on their lungs. So this is in violation of all medical ethics, all international codes, and the military's own policy at that time. And Venezuelan leader Hugo Chavez has once again accused the United States of playing God. This time, it's Haiti's disastrous earthquake that he thinks the U.S. was behind. Spanish newspaper ABC quotes Chavez as saying that the U.S. Navy launched a weapon capable of inducing a powerful earthquake off the shore of Haiti. He adds that this time, it was only a drill, and the final target is destroying and taking over Iran. A wild accusation from Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He says Western countries are causing drought in certain parts of the world, including Iran. He says they're using high-tech equipment to drain raindrops from clouds. He basically says European countries are stealing rain from Iran for their own use. Carcasses littering the streets of Zug Island, Detroit. These kind of events are happening all over the globe. We don't hear about them because of all the theater that I've mentioned at the beginning of this program. The population has no clue what's unfolding, and the mass carnage, the mass die off all over the world while the military industrial complex continues to expand, while the medical industrial complex continues to expand. From this report, with hundreds of screeching seagulls hovering above the rotting bird carcasses littering the streets of the scene near Zug Island, in southwest Detroit. The scenes seem straight out of an apocalyptic horror movie. This is only one event. I'm giving one example of many events around the globe. Residents and commuters reported the deaths, some claiming to have seen at least, to have seen hundreds of bloodied and rotting bird carcasses at a time. Experts are supposedly investigating the issue. 
testing and trying to produce answers, but have come up with no conclusive conclusions. This is what the agencies do, and I've been over this week after week as well. They are paid to not know, to not disclose the truth, and to hide threats from the population, not to disclose those threats. Again and again and again, we see this with, with agencies from the EPA to air quality testing, on and on. That's what they're tasked with doing, hiding threats from the population. Another week of massive fish die-offs, as I stated earlier, continued all over the globe last week. But of course, none of this is reported by the criminal mainstream media. Please search this issue. It's not just one or two places. It's all over the globe. Countless reasons for this, and this is where the dichotomous thinking, again, must be abandoned. Many people blame all the ocean die-off on Fukushima. Others blame it all on the Macondo oil well spill in the Gulf or some other cause or reason. It's all of the above. It's the depleted uranium our Navy's using for practice. It's the poisons, the toxins that are pouring off of every country, everywhere, all over the globe. Our ocean is used for a giant toilet, a nuclear waste dump. Nuclear waste is, is deposited from many countries just dumped into the ocean and an even bigger issue back to climate engineering destroying the ozone layer releasing massive amounts of thermal energy on the ocean a very intense uv radiation that's heating the ocean the uv radiation is killing the plankton the ocean is stratifying losing its oxygen as it warms rapidly seabed deposits of methane and hydrogen sulfide are releasing into the water column also deoxygenating the water all over the globe, we see all these factors converging at once. And there's still people, and this is truly astounding to me, there's still a great many people who are delusionally pretending that all of this carnage we see, all of this die-off is somehow just a natural cycle. These radical weather whiplash swings and the scaldingly hot temperatures, which I'll get to in a moment, in, in increasing numbers of places around the globe, it's all just somehow natural. Let's put this into mathematical context. Whether we're talking about the mass die-off, we're in the sixth great mass extinction right now, well into the sixth great mass extinction. We have conditions that are changing at a pace on the planet that are unlike any before seen on the planet, even with paleo data stretching back an incredibly long amount of time.